Hello, everybody. It's Pastor Creed coming to you once again with this week's Sunday School Rundown. Uh, we will be starting our new summer, or our new quarter, the summer quarter, uh, with the lessons that are going to be focused on uh, growing in Christ. And so what that means for us, and uh, really they're going to be focused on the idea of vocation and, and the idea that God has given each of us many vocations. Uh, the, and, and the kids uh, may not have heard that word before or quite really understand what it is. So it might be good to get, spend a little time just discussing what vocation means and the concept of vocation. You know, it, it extends simply beyond our occupation. Like what is your job uh, to include all the ways in which we serve others for Christ's sake. So um, you may have the vocation of parent yet at the same time, you are a sibling, a teacher, a doctor, a friend, all of these things encompass your vocation. And so this summer, the Sunday School lessons are designed to help our young people connect biblical characters and modern day vocations together to see how they lived out their God-given vocations in a God-pleasing way. And so as each lesson unfolds, they'll be able to see how God's love leads us to serve others through our vocation. And that's really what's important is the idea of serving others through our vocation. And so for this week, uh, for the first lesson, we will be in uh, lesson one, uh, which is Rebecca serves at the well. And this is taken from Genesis chapter uh, 24, verses 10 through 28. So let us begin in God's word. From Genesis chapter 24. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from his master. And he arose and he went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of the water at the time of evening, the time when women would go out and draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young, let the young women to whom I uh, shall say, Please let down your jar that I may drink. And who shall say, Drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, whom was born to Bethel and the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very attractive in appearance a maiden whom no man had known. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a little water to drink from your jar. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she quickly let down the jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water from your camels also, until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water, and she drew from all for all his camels. And the man gazed at her in silence, to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring a gold ring weighing a half shekel, and two <clears throat> excuse me, and two bracelets from her arms for her arms, weighing ten gold shekels, and said, Please tell me whose daughter you are. Is there, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She said, We have plenty of both straw and fodder and room to spend the night. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord, and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness towards my master. As for me, the Lord has led me in the way to the house of my master's kinsman. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so with this account, we see uh, Rebecca uh, serving at the well. We see Abraham's servant who had gone out uh, to find a, a, a wife for Isaac. Um, and so when we look at this lesson as far as the law gospel aspect of it, uh, the law is what we know in, in our sinfulness. Uh, we, we think of only our convenience, only our pleasure. Uh, 
when we perform acts of kindness, we often come to believe that we deserve credit or recognition for our deeds. We're, they're not selfless. They are selfish acts that we commit. But the gospel is that Jesus' selfless sacrifice for his, uh, of his life and his death gives us all we need to, and all that we need and frees us to serve others gladly. Uh, because of Jesus and apart from our deeds, God gives us infinitely more than we, than we deserve. He gives us life and salvation. And so uh, when we look at this servant kind of, or the servant at this uh, lesson, what we see is that when the servant arrived in Nahor, he rested his camels at the well. This, you know, and, and this gave him the opportunity to meet the prospective brides uh, for Isaac. And, and it was in it was customary in that culture that the women would come daily to draw the waters at the evening for the, the from the community well for their household, and so the servant faithfully prayed to God and asked it that the first woman that that he would meet would be the one for Isaac, and God showed His love for Abraham by answering that prayer and reminding us that God's love is is shown by His loving actions, and so before the servant had finished the praying, Rebecca, uh, Rebecca, the grandniece of, of Abraham, arrived and demonstrated, uh, and demonstrated that the Lord's uh, promise was being fulfilled. Um, and through Rebecca, uh, was, and though Rebecca was beautiful, she had not used her beauty for sin, but had remained pure. And her humility, her graciousness, and her generosity surpassed her beauty. Uh, she served Abraham's servant, uh, not giving, not just giving water to him, but to his ten camels, which uh, would have taken a lot of time and effort. And then the servant watched and learned whether the Lord had really prospered his journey, as he says in verse 21. And he knew that any success would come only from the Lord. And Abraham had sent valuable gifts along, and the servant gave them to uh, some of them to Rebekah, and she most likely thought that they were in kind of extra, extravagant thank yous for helping, but they were actually bridal gifts, and that uh, she was the one was confirmed by her blood relationship to Abraham. And so the, the, the servant acknowledged the Lord's faithfulness to him and to Abraham by bowing down to bless the Lord with thanksgiving. And as we do in our own liturgy every Sunday at the end when we say, let us bless the Lord, and, we, and the congregation responds, thanks be to God. Uh, Rebecca told her family uh, the news. Uh, we'll see, uh, at, not in the reading that we did, but uh, the, the continuation of that, that narrative. Uh, Rebecca winds up telling her family the news and recounts the servant obtaining permission from Rebecca and her family to take her to Isaac for marriage. And later, Rebecca would, would actually bear twin sons, Jacob and Esau. And we know Jacob was, uh, after wrestling with God, is renamed Israel, and he would be the father of God's people. And out of Israel would come the Messiah and that suffering servant that we hear about in Isaiah 53. And Jesus, uh, as we understand, as, as, as Matthew tells us, records, Jesus came not to, to serve, but to be, or not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so he still serves us at church with his saving word and sacraments. And so we, in turn, present our bodies at church as a living sacrifice, which is our spiritual worship. And so we are freed from sin. We know uh, through love, uh, uh, we, we now through love serve one another. And knowing that we actually are serving the Lord Christ in all of our vocations that we have. And so for a, um, a memory verse, a Bible verse for the, the kids this week, uh, a good one is from Isaiah 65, verse 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. And it reminds us of, of the trust that the servant put in uh, to God to, to deliver this, this uh, marriage for um, Isaac. Now, when we look to our catechism connection, we can see it up here on the screen. It is the sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear loving God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do. And husband and wife love and honor each other. Now, as far as that, the connection there is, you know, we, we understand that Rebecca was a, a you know, a, a, a pure woman. Uh, she um, did not leave, lead a uh, scandalous life. Uh, she saved herself. Um as as Genesis twenty four sixteen points out that, that she was a virgin, 
And, and so um, obviously, uh, depending on the age group of your kids is, you know, explain a, the, at the appropriate level what they need to understand. But it points to marriage and, and that vocation of husband and wife. And what it means to to be committed to one another. God wants marriage to be one woman and one man for a lifetime. And that's what God's picture of marriage is. And uh, through the sixth commandment, he, he gives us the the gift of chastity. And he gives the, and he saves that, that gift of, of marital union uh, for husband and wife. And, and so, uh, you know, emphasize the importance of marriage. And faithfulness in that vocation to as husband to wife and wife to husband and parents to children um, when they are blessed with, with a family, um, and so uh, and that's kind of where we we are as far as uh, the young kids as what they need to know coming out of this. Uh, the, you know that Jesus is uh, his his selfless sacrifice of his life and his death. Um, that frees us. That frees us to not be selfish. It frees us to be able to give to others and to serve others as Christ served us. Same thing for the older kids, that, that we are freed now to serve others in our vocation. Uh, remember, this: the, these lessons are all about vocation and where we can serve. And so emphasize to the kids uh, you know, what are they? You know, they're students, they're, they're siblings, they are, uh, maybe they're grandchildren, maybe they're neighbors, they're, maybe they're teammates or, or whatever they, they, they find the vocations they find themselves in, where are the opportunities that they can serve their neighbor? And so hopefully this little rundown will help you as, uh, you prepare for this, this lesson, as you, uh, continue to uh, read and meditate upon these words. And uh, thank you for all that you do, um, especially during these summer months that I know it's often difficult with, with travel and, and everything else that's going on in the summer. So thank you for your time and effort into uh, to, to teaching the children of Bethlehem these important lessons. So thank you, and I will see everybody on Sunday. Have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.